Hello and welcome to lecture number 14. Uh, so today we are going to talk about emulsions and micro emulsions. So uh, by definition, emulsion means that a liquid dispersed medium uh, is in liquid dispersion medium. So that means one type of liquid is suspended or dispersed in another liquid dispersion phase. So obviously, uh, these two liquids has to be uh, non-miscible or immiscible, and so it demands that there will be uh, a certain noticeable difference in densities as well as the refractive index uh, related to density. So that would make uh, an emulsion. So therefore, uh, to understand that. Uh, what do we need to form an emulsion? Let's start with some simple uh, practical example uh, with some uh, graphic, uh, graphical representation. So, <clears throat> let's imagine that uh, we have uh, water and then we have uh, oil. Okay. So obviously, since uh, oil and water has two different densities and the water is expected to have more density than oil, so water would be at the bottom layer and the oil would be floating. So in normal condition, normal circumstances, so there will be two phases and we call that there is a phase separation between two different medium like so oil and water. So now what happens that if I want to Star it, star the, the two phases vigorously, all right, means uh, violence starring, or if we whip it, so a very strong whipping would make a scenario something like this. So let's, we can imagine that the oil droplet, so there would be fine, finely suspended oil droplets in water. All right. So whenever we achieve such scenario, we, we may call that an emulsion has been formed. All right. But you see, here the emulsion is formed basically due to mechanical stirring. Why I'm calling this is mechanical stirring? Because if we stop the mechanical stirring, so if we rest uh, the emulsion as it is like this, so after a while, it will again go back uh, its original configuration. That means its original state. That means we have we would have a once again a phase separation. So let's take a look at this scenario over here. So if we see that uh, the oil droplets as a finely suspended. Uh, so we can call it uh, micron, maybe if we uh, star it really well, then we can have some micron size diameter. Uh, the oil, I'm talking about the water, uh, the oil droplets, we have the micron size diameter. So as we have already uh, discussed this topic before in a manner that if we have finely suspended particle, means smaller the particle size, it will always involve a very high surface area, all right? So obviously, we can write from here that in emulsion involves uh, finely suspended particles. So we can write here fine or smaller uh, droplets. So we cannot write particles here because this is liquid. So fine smaller droplets have huge surface area and that we have already observed it all right uh, in initial uh, few lectures as uh, the introductory part so this fine huge surface area is always associated with a high surface energy but since we are this is uh, the phase boundary between uh, two different liquids so instead of right huge surface we actually call it interface so it has a huge surface or uh, interface area and so that involves high inter 
facial tension or high interfacial energy. So this high interfacial energy is always expressed in terms of high gives interfacial free energy or simply high gives free energy. All right. So therefore you understand that if we, if we want to have an emulsion where we have finely suspended particles, we must need to do something to counter this high Gibbs free energy. So you can imagine that the situation over here is a kindly uh, is a kind of highly unstable situation. So that means it is some high energy is involved so there must be an energy barrier to uh, get this position from here all right so therefore what do we need to do so that we can counter uh, we can actually negate such high gives free energy so therefore then we can actually pose this question once again that how to stabilize uh, the high gives free energy. So obviously there could be two ways. The first way is the mechanical style. So that means the, the situation we just uh, you know, erased, so where by mechanically beating or whipping, uh, we have the formation of emulsions. So that means uh, the mechanical energy was providing such high Gibbs free energy. All right, so as long as we keep on beating, uh, we would be providing such high Gibbs free energy and we have the emulsion and the moment you start beating it, the system would go, uh, would go to stabilize from higher gives energy to lower one. Means it would come to the uh, its ground state and it will have phase separation. Now what is the other possible way? Well, the other possible way is to use of some specially designed molecules and by now we know that these types of molecules are called surfactants. So therefore, we can add some surfactant molecules to overcome this high Gibbs free energy. Why? Because in few uh, lectures earlier that we have seen, that addition of surfactant, okay, it lowers the surface or interfacial tension. So since surfactant lowers the interfacial tension, so it would immediately make the high interfacial energy into a very relatively low value. But still, we can have those uh, tiny droplets. We can still have some huge surface energy without having huge surface. It means uh, what I, uh, uh, I should put it in this way. We should, uh, we would be having a huge surface or interface area without having a very uh, a huge interfacial energy or high Gibbs free energy. So that is the role of the surfactant. Okay. So therefore, the most important thing that we learn from this uh, discussion that apart from mechanical uh, beating, so mechanical beating is uh, not a uh, sustained solution because uh, in many practical applications, we need to have stable emulsion. So stable emulsion means without doing anything, it would stay as emulsion. So therefore, if I want to have such kind of stable emulsion, we have to forget the mechanical beating. So for a self-sustained emulsion, we need to have surfactant molecules, all right? So let's clean the board and let's try to have uh, uh, an example or let's try to have an illustration to understand that how well does the surfactant lower the interfacial uh, energy so that we can have a uh, very um, fine emulsion or even we can have micro emulsion.
Okay, so let's talk about it more here. Okay. So <clears throat> now let's try to understand that how does surfactant uh, work to make emulsion. So imagine that we have uh, an air water surface and if we keep adding surfactants, so obviously uh, what we can expect that the surfactant molecules would go at the air water interface that means the surface of the water. So therefore we can draw a picture like that. Okay. And uh, if we keep on adding sufficient number of surfactant, so the entire surface would be fully covered with a monolayer of the surfactant molecule. All right. So this is water and this is air. Now in this situation, <clears throat> what would happen that we have basically a layer of hydrocarbon molecules. Now this layer can uh, be so compact that such long chain tail protruding towards the air can be or it can behave like a liquid hydrocarbon layer. So this layer we can say that may behave as a liquid hydrocarbon layer because there is so much of abundance of the long chain hydrocarbon tail all right but as we mentioned before that this uh, uh, when the uh, surfactant molecules present at the surface they lower the surface tension of water a significant, uh, by a significant extent but still this surface has some considerable surface energy so it can still have some considerable it still has some considerable surface energy and uh, some experiments reveal that this surface energy is in the range of 30 to 40 millijoule per meter square. Okay. So this is still quite high. Now let's imagine that we have an oil and water interface. Okay. So this uh, part is oil and this is water and we again do the same thing that we add in surfactant. So now what we get is definitely we have the surfactant molecules that would exactly orient themselves or get absorbed at the interface of oil and water. So this side we can say this is water. And on top, we have the oil layer, okay? So the uh, surfactant assembly would be at the middle at the interface of oil and water. So in the oil side, it has strong van der Waal interaction uh, with the oil molecules. So the strong van der Waal interaction between the oil molecules and the hydrocarbon chain. And there is a strong either dipole-dipole or ion-dipole interaction depending on the nature of the polar head group, this favorable uh, interaction with water. So therefore, by, by the virtue of this double favorable interaction, means uh, van der Waal interaction in oil side and this dipole-dipole uh, uh, or ion-dipole interaction or sometimes it can be, uh, uh, there could be some intermolecular hydrogen bonding as well in water side. So the interfacial energy gets lower. The question is how lower? The interfacial energy actually may tend to even zero. So therefore we understand that surfactants lower the interfacial energy. So once the interfacial energy is lower, it helps 
to expand the surface area and we can have the formation of emulsion without enhancing the interfacial energy. So interfacial energy would rather reduce and even would you know, approach to zero, but we have a huge number of, a huge uh, 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 surface area. So, once again, I am writing that uh, the gamma absorbed, all right, uh, gamma absorbed for uh, emulsion to happen is equal to uh, the gamma original minus pi. Pi is the expanding pressure as we have uh, seen this uh, equation before. So when emulsification happens, so when emulsification happens, then this pi tends to gamma naught. So therefore, gamma observed actually tends to zero. And in some extreme situations, it may happen that pi becomes slightly greater than the gamma original. So therefore, this gamma observed may become negative. So this is the explanation, uh, physical explanation, that how or why, uh, what happens when pi tends to gamma zero, or, okay? So that means gamma observed tends to zero. So we have interfacial energy can go down from a value as high as 30 to 40 millijoule per meter square to almost zero. All right. So now next we will see that uh, what are the different ranges of the liquid droplets when it forms emulsion and microemulsion and what are the uh, relative self interfacial energy ranges so that it will give us a clear picture that whenever interfacial energy goes to zero, so in fact, how close does it approach to zero? So let's clean the board and quickly explain that. So here I have tried to draw a relative scale for emulsion and microemulsion. So therefore, here we talk about the average size in diameter. So at this end, we may have the average size as 0 0.01 micron, all right? And here we can have 0 0.1 micron, and here we have 10 micron. So this range, so between 0 0.01 micron to 0 0.1 micron, so this basically translates into 10 nanometer to 100 nanometer. So basically this region is, uh, we have, formation of tiny droplets that are having diameter in nanoscale, all right? So this, whenever such size condition is met, we can call that a micro emulsion has formed. And once this is larger than 100 nanometer in diameter, up to 10 micron, all right? So, that means 10,000 uh, nanometer, uh, we call that part or that kind of suspension as emulsion. All right, so definitely there is a size uh, demarcation. So now obviously you see that uh, a liquid droplet as low as uh, 20, 30 nanometer, for that to happen, we definitely have to have a very low interfacial energy. So now I'm going to write the experimentally found average interfacial energy that we can expect. So the average interfacial energy or the gamma oil water, we can call it the interfacial tension, is somewhat around 0 0.001 millijoule per meter square, all right? And it can go up to 0 0.1 millijoule per meter square. So this range is once again for micro emulsion. And for emulsion, maximum it can go up to 1 millijoule per meter square, all right? So remember, imagine, so 30 to 40 millijoule per meter square, uh, 
uh, we had for a normal uh, surfactant residing on the air water interface. So once we start to uh, decrease that surface tension closer to zero uh, in presence of both two invisible liquids, we can start to have the formation of emulsion first. So whenever the interfacial tension goes below one, we can have the formation of emulsion up to 0.1 millijoule per meter square. Now, even if we further lower the interfacial tension, we can have the formation of nano-sized liquid droplets. So that is the micro emulsion. And ex experimentally, we can expect that it can go 0.001 millijoule per meter square, usually. All right, so in some special circumstances, uh, it can be uh, even lower, as I said, it could be even negative. Uh, but uh, these are the general considerations. So in terms of joule, you see 0 0.001 millijoule per meter square uh, is uh, quite low value. All right. So uh, now the nature of the surfactant is important because the nature of the surfactant would define uh, whether we would have either oil in water or water in oil emulsion. So that's very important. Now, as I mentioned that uh, in food industry, uh, paint industry and pharmaceuticals and also uh, cosmetic industry, the uses of uh, emulsions and micro emulsions are rampant. In fact, its, it's greatest application means, uh, I would say, uh, the uh, application day, uh, that we come across daily, every day, in some food. All right. And also it appears in paint, uh, cosmetics, and uh, pharmaceuticals also. So, for example, we can take uh, two um, common uh, products. One is the mayonnaise. Uh, I hope that uh, you know what mayonnaise is. Uh, it's a kind of a, uh, uh, with a viscous uh, food uh, product. Sometimes we use it to consume sandwiches. So uh, it is an emulsion, and this is an example of oil in water emulsion. So what happens here that in mayonnaise uh, we have oil droplets uh, suspended in water. So therefore, mayonnaise is, is something that is water soluble because its dispersion medium is water. And another thing is butter is it is just the reverse of mayonnaise. So in, in butter is uh, oil in uh, water in oil uh, emulsion. So uh, we have water dro droplets which is suspended in hydrophobic oil. All right. Uh, or uh, no. Saturated fat. Uh, or uh, yeah, saturated fat uh, medium. You know, may contain few uh, unsaturated uh, fatty acids also. So uh, that's how we define um, mayonnaise and butter. All right. And uh, another very common example of emulsion is milk. Okay. So milk is uh, obviously it is milk is soluble in water so that means milk in the dispersion phase is water okay h2o and basically uh, it is uh, oil in water emulsion it is uh, it can be represented in such manner because milk in milk, what happens that we have some fat droplets okay uh, so i should uh, draw it a little bit larger here other it is a bit uh, hazy so we can try to describe it like that. So imagine we have a fat droplet, okay? And uh, the dispersion medium is water, but fat would not go in water like that as a droplet. 
So for that, we have to have some surfactant molecules. Okay? So can you imagine what are the surfactant molecules here? The surfactant molecules are actually protein molecules. Okay, because remember, milk is a good source of proteins as well as fat. So and uh, that's why sometimes milk is called a complete food because it has uh, like both protein, fat, uh, and some other things also. Um, so whenever we have a nicely suspended fat particles, and those particles are very tiny, almost close to microemulsion, uh, and nicely uniformly suspended in water, we call that thing not only milk, but it is called homogenized milk. So milk, when it is isolated from animals normally, it doesn't stay as homogenized. So non-homogenized milk means sometimes the fat comes out of the water medium and it uh, floats on the water aqueous medium. All right. So uh, and uh, if we release uh, in our, if we remove the fat layer or if we decrease the amount of fat, we call it skimmed milk. Anyway, so uh, in whenever we do homogenization of milk, what we do, we make sure that those fat droplets are uniformly surrounded by right amount of proteins, protein molecules, so that we have a uniform dispersion. Okay, and so the, these days uh, we actually call the same homogenized milk uh, that serve as a um, balanced uh, diet for us. So uh, anyway, so the bottom line is uh, that there are different types of uh, emulsions and microemulsions we use every day. Uh, so we are uh, going to discuss some of its application in paint uh, and food industry later. But um, right now, in the next uh, topic, as the next topic, we will talk about a few salient aspects on the stability of these uh, emulsions and microemulsions. And uh, before we proceed further, uh, we just uh, try to, you know, acknowledge one more thing. That is the shape of, or we can write the form of. Uh, emulsion uh, suspension. All right. So uh, whenever we call droplet, droplet means uh, we are thinking that this is uh, a spherical uh, entity. So uh, so we can write, and this is obviously true that in majority of the cases we have spherical emulsion. That means the spherical liquid droplets that form the emulsion. But this is not the only case. In some other cases also, uh, the emulsion can be formed in terms of some irregular bicontinuous phase. Okay. Mostly. And sometimes it can be made some real regular bicontinuous phase also. And by the term bicontinuous phase, I uh, uh, meant uh, or uh, I mean, uh, attempted to say that this is the same uh, bicontinuous phase that we came across while we discussed the five major uh, types of uh, surfactant self assembly. Yes, I'm talking about the same kind of surfactant assembly uh, as uh, you know. As we learned, that is a, a bicontinuous um, phase uh, while we discuss that topic. So um, these two dif different types of um, uh, emulsion in terms of structure are possible. All right. So let's uh, raise the board and uh, go to uh, the uh, last topic of today's lecture. That is the stability of emulsions and microemulsions. Okay. 
All right, so here we are going to talk about the stability of emulsion and microemulsion with respect to uh, phase separation. So, obviously, uh, we need surfactant to form the micelles, but how to make sure that uh, in spite of having uh, a surfactant uh, uh, layer at the interface of oil and water, accidentally, they don't, uh, once again, means the droplets don't coalesce each other, or even if we influence the droplets to coalesce with each other, uh, it won't go into phase separation. So what are the factors that ensure that emulsion, in spite of you do anything else, it stays as emulsion or microemulsion? So there are three major factors. So that keep the emulsions or microemulsions as stable in all conditions. So first of all, this is electrostatic repulsion. So electrostatic repulsion means, um, suppose we have this oil layer, and uh, obviously we have uh, these surfactant molecules. And uh, depending on the surfactant molecules, uh, we may choose a ionic head group, so we can assume that these are positively charged. So therefore, uh, there will be a layer of positive charge around these uh, emulsion droplets and so this one positively charged droplet would repel another positively charged droplet by you know, uh, electrostatic forces. So therefore, um, this is a very good reason and that these um, uh, liquid droplets won't come, to near, uh, won't come to each other very near. Uh, and then the adsorption of polymers and proteins. Uh, it happens in many natural cases, for example, milk. So automatically some polymers, means polar molecules, polar polymers, and some proteins, they get adsorbed on the fat surface, liquid surface. Uh, so they as helps to stay, uh, they uh, help to help the oil medium to stay as nice uh, and stable dispersion in the form of emulsion or microemulsion in water, all right? So this is the, the second reason uh, is very important. And the third thing is the most um, important reason uh, for a stable emulsion or microemulsion. And, specific, and uh, this third reason has uh, some industrial significance. All right, so you can understand the importance of the third factor. So it's the adsorption of some finely divided clay or carbon particle. So as we have learned earlier, that in water, clay particles stay negatively charged, means clay source, finely divided clay, divided. Uh, and uh, carbon particles also, but in the same reason, they may stay uh, as uh, Know, negatively charged. Um, so what happens? Uh, and this this happens uh, in uh, natural cases. So this is these are all natural phenomena, and uh, this mostly happen in natural petroleum. Um, so we'll come to that portion uh, part later on, uh, but uh, these are the three major reasons that uh, we can have uh, our the emulsions or microemulsion can stay stable. Uh, now, before we go further, uh, we have to talk a very important thing about uh, microemulsion. Well, microemulsion, as we have uh, studied, that they have to satisfy some size range. It is true. But apart from the size range, it also has some other significance. So let's take a look at that. Uh, well, if we think about the oil and water uh, phase separated interface, at this condition, thermodynamically, this is the most stable. Right, in absence of any surfactant. But if we start adding some surfactant, 
we may have an emulsion, all right? So emulsion, although it is a, uh, stable, relatively stable, and I mean, uh, it is, uh, uh, it has been made stable in this condition. Still, we can call it a metastable phase or metastable state because it is the only the presence of surfactant that makes this thing uh, that accounts for its stability. The moment uh, the surfactants are gone, uh, it can it can be back to the oil and water in the space separated scenario. So this is thermodynamically most stable situation. But a very peculiar thing happens if these uh, so this is emulsion if these emulsions are made into something micro emulsion so in case of micro emulsions the gamma observed tends to zero or even it tends to be negative so there are a very tiny droplets we can observe here and surprisingly the micro emulsions are thermodynamically more stable than the emulsion itself. So this is thermodynamically stable and this is thermodynamically stable, but emulsion is a thermodynamically metastable state. And uh, no matter how we how well we try to describe the stability of this situation that we can say that well we can have the surfactants uh, some surfactants that makes this uh, gamma observed equals <coughs> to zero it is very hard to describe that uh, even though the gamma observed observe is close to zero and negative how come this situation uh, becomes unusually stable so i am repeating my statement that micro emulsions are unusually stable and it is so stable that it's, it makes our life difficult. Why? So now we have come to the point to discuss something about liquid petroleum. Alright? So liquid petroleum once uh, the oil and natural gas corporation agency that means uh, the uh, petroleum extraction companies worldwide when they extract the petroleum uh, that means a fossil fuel so i'm just talking about crude fossil fuel so the crude fossil fuel uh, when uh, it is extracted, it does not come out as a phase separated hydrocarbon layer. So this crude fossil fuel comes out as a finely suspended oil droplets in water in a form of micro emulsion and, I, and as i mentioned before that the micro emulsion has unusual stability so this suspension is also unusually stable because it is micro emulsion so why the, it, the micro emulsion forms i have already described that it uh, absorbs uh, clay particles or natural polymers etc so it comes into the micro emulsion and the base is water. So now, the oil refinery's job is to phase separate these oils, it means oil droplets, into pure oil and pure water. So the water can be discarded and we can extract the pure oil. All right. But the problem is, it is not so easy because if we get some easy micro emulsions, then we can separate so the most of the oil industries are doing it. But there are certain oil reserves where we are we, we can have some ultra high stable micro emulsions where 
the phase separation becomes very difficult. And currently, I'm telling you that in USA, 40% of their current oil reserve is only being used and rest of the 60% is unused at this point. The reason is not economical or not political. The reason is purely chemical because those oil reserves means the fossil fuels that are extracted from those oil reserves are having such stable microemulsion and those are so stable that under no uh, circumstances at present or uh, um, given technologies that we consider today, uh, we are not in a position to separate uh, this microemulsion into oil and water. Okay, so more research is going on, and uh, at present, uh, a, a school of chemical engineers are currently working uh, on how to separate uh, oil from water, uh, uh, from stable uh, microemulsion to have uh, pure usable crude oil uh, to need uh, to cater uh, the energy consumption of uh, today's uh, civilization. So, okay, so that's all about uh, emulsion and microemulsions uh, for today's lecture. So, in the next lecture, we are going to take another fundamental problem that if we have an oil-water uh, phase separated interface, if we add some surfactant, then what would happen? All right, so we will take that on the next lecture. So uh, you stay put and please uh, study uh, the textbooks that I have shared with you alongside. And so I will see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.